All right, guys, I have a challenge lock here from Lock Picking Lebowski, and I just wanted to document how I've screwed up already, and I haven't even seen the lock. Um, I did cut this. There was so much tape along the flaps, I just decided to cut it with scissors, and when I look in here, I notice that I cut the letter, and on it, I can see that it says Top Secret. So uh, I'm not going to <laughs> even take that out, but... I, it's clear I could easily get inside of there and peek, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, I will dump everything out. Let's see what we got. There's a key. Okay, the key is, the key is taped to it. Okay, let her save for camera. Cool. All right, but I did cut the end of it off by accident, so the end of it, probably, right here. There it is. All right, well, my... One more screw up to add to my very, very long list. But I don't feel bad because I got something to chew on. A boo boo le boo. All right. All kinds of good stuff. I will be working on this while I work on the lock. Let's look at the lock. All right. A slinky. I can imagine what's inside of here. I'm looking for, I've seen some of the dude's pinnings before. I, I kind of know, I kind of expected to see little side plates with hidden pins, a couple of random drill ones for additional side pins. Who knows what could be inside of here. Um, it is a Yale style keyway. I'm trying to look up inside of there. And I don't see any weird stuff on that first pin. It just looks like a standard pin up there in the front. And that's about all I'm going to cheat. Let me go ahead and clamp this thing up and see what Slinky's got inside. All right, guys, I know this is not proof to you that I didn't peek at that letter. I haven't, but uh, this is my third try. <laughs> so I think if I'd peeked and it had done me any good, it would have helped me out long before now. All right, my first two failed attempts, 10 minutes each, were trying to go clockwise. This time, I think I'll try to go counterclockwise and it is a Yale keyway so when you use the top of the keyway tensioner these work great for clockwise that's why I tried it twice but when you go counterclockwise it kind of rolls around that little curve just the way it's designed and you can't do that so you have to use bottom of the keyway I'm gonna use the medium one I think that'll be right tell you what let me use try that big one I think that's probably a little better. That way I know he's not rolling down there and seizing up the cylinder. I am going to stay with the same pick I used on the first two attempts, the Attila. Um, ideally, I would like something very thin, but I've already broken four of my 15 thousandths picks. So there are three pins in here, two, three, and four, that are just, at least when you go clockwise, very nasty. Uh, very precise, so when you pick one, the other two fall. So I'm hoping, by going in the opposite direction, that uh, the binding order will be different. I'll have a little bit better chance. So let's try it. Okay, that was pin two. Oh, tell you what, why don't we, let's reset this. Let's put a, let's tension it counterclockwise, put a little mark on it right there. All right, now let's start that clock again. Oh, I'm about two minutes. <sighs> All right, all the way in, light tension. Pin two again. Got a little click, tiny little click. Pin three, okay, I got a little fault set, click down. Pin four, real crunchy. Got a little deeper fault set out of it. Pin two again, fell back down. Clicked again. Four's down. Counter, clock, counter rotation on the spool, just very slight. And I got a fault set. Two did not fall. How refreshing. Okay, that was three, two did not fall, and four did not fall. So we're breaking new ground here. Uh, the downside, of course, is that I'm getting no feedback. 
I believe that's pin two. You back down. Not all the way. Okay, that's pin five, little counter rotation. Whoa, that was nasty. I do still have a fault set. Three's down. Okay, got him. Four's down. Come on. This is where I break the pick. Okay, nice little click. Still working with a fault set. Not much but something. Three down. It's really hard to get on him, too. He just seems to roll off to the side. Come on. And there we go. All right, I will take it. We're at uh, 24 minutes and 35 seconds right now. Let's gut it. I won't make you suffer through the first two failures. I'll make sure I leave those off, but all right, get that tensioner out of there. Get all this off to the side. Get a pinning turret. I was almost starting to feel like wasted afternoon, another whipped. And I came very close. Now it's time to eat my boo boo loo boo. All right, this is the envelope. I have not opened it, but the key at least is still sealed. Let's go ahead. Let's see. Uh, it says open before gutting. Okay, do not open until after picking. Well, I stumbled onto that, and everything's safe for the camera. I don't want to give away any personal information. Okay, so this is the guarantee. <sighs> that I won't screw up the gutting. So it shows you where everything's going to be, but more importantly, it tells me what's going to pop out. All right, so I got a whole lot of ball bearings to worry about starting in chamber three. So three and four, look out for disasters. And then we got, it looks like a real strong spring in number five. And it looks like we got some, well, we'll go ahead and look at it, but some threads in the chamber there in chamber two. All right, let's give it a try. Let's pull that key off of there. You know, why didn't it rake? That should have raked. And you guys won't have to look at it, but I spent a big part of attempt number one trying to rake it. Perfect, guys. Perfectly smooth. No snagging, no nothing. Goes both ways, just like my brother-in-law. All right, let's pull this off of here. Okay, let's, the advantage of having this cheat sheet, do I need a shim? And I would say probably not. The only one a shim, shim might get caught up on would be that uh, T-pin in chamber one, but that's right at the very opposite end of where I'm trying to go. So I think we're, I think we're good. He says right before the gutting disaster icon shows up. All right, there are the promised ball bearings in chamber four. I don't know how, how many are there. That looks like part of a chain, actually. I don't know if, I, if they're separate, if maybe I pick some to the higher chamber. I don't know, we'll find out in a minute. Very long pin. Uh, we have a serrated. Chamber two is also threaded. Three is standard. Four is, oh, it's a chain. That's not just ball bearing, that's a chain. No wonder I had so many failures with deep fault sets. All right, here we go, guys. Just one threaded chamber. Yeah, let's take a look at this. Well, we'll look at it later. 
We'll look at it later. I want to save some good stuff. I don't want to give away all the secrets right now. Because then all you guys to turn off the video, right? Our chamber one is the promised T pin. And the spring, that was not a very strong spring. I thought it was going to be like a, looking at the picture, it almost looks like a, a Bic lighter spring, but it isn't. Okay, we got a standard in chamber two with a very light gauge steel spring. Number three is, again, it's not ball bearings, it's, it's a chain. Number three. Number four is a spool. And I'm looking over at the picture trying to figure out if that's what was promised. And the last one. Wow, that was really strong. That is a super spring. And he was in like that. And this guy here. Come out of there. Really, really a strong spring. And I think we have one spring left in chamber four. There he is. It's an ASA spring. Okay, upstairs, I don't see any threading or counter milling on the, anything like that. All right, now let's go back and look at the magic. I like this, guys. I like having a drawing. It did save me from, that would save me from a lot of gutting disasters, particularly on the stuff that, you know, that freaky stuff you guys put in. All right, let's look at one of the, how one of these would work. I've had these before. He was in chamber four, so let's put him in chamber four. I got a lot of false sets. Now notice how that ball bearing kind of floats. Let me get, come on, focus. How it kind of floats there. So when he reaches that chain, you get your deep, deep false set. And if you're in the wrong place, like I was, several times, man, that could be very deceptive. Because once you pinch on that tiny waist between those two, you're not likely to get a lot of feedback. I run into these before a while back. I think it was Luca's Balls was the first one to come up with this idea, and it worked great. Luca's Balls got a whipped. I, this one didn't. Not because I'm any smarter, but because today I am a lot luckier. Anyway, guys, I appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. Lock picking Lebowski, thank you, sir, for this sheet. All right, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe, stay legal. Lock picking Lebowski. That was a battery failure, by the way. Appreciate you taking the time to put together this, this uh, reassembly sheet. Thanks, guys. If you like the idea of growing the Lock Sport community, please consider supporting the Lock Lab by either becoming a Patreon or clicking the join button below.